All right, welcome to the Technically Short Podcast, where Sean Short and me, Thomas Carney, talk about any, anything, pretty much anything. And yeah, today it was brought, well, the other yesterday uh, it was brought to my attention by Andrew Vergato that uh, in episode one when we were doing an introduction to Sean and I, I never actually talked about myself. <laughs> Not at all. So, uh, so yeah, he said, he was like, yeah, you just jumped straight in, straight, in. you were going to talk about yourself, and you jumped straight into Sean moving in. And so, in this episode, we're actually going to do a part one and a part two, where, uh, in this, uh, this episode, Sean's going to be asking me some questions, interviewing me about, um, Whatever he's going to ask me about, I don't really know. And then it's a surprise. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> and then, I, then next episode, we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to be doing the same thing for him. And this week, this episode is going to be coming out on today. Uh, today on Tuesday, and then the next episode is actually going to come out uh, later on Thursday, so that uh, you guys can get both of them in the same both of them in the same week, and then we'll go back to once a week after that. Really good. You're gonna love this. But yeah, if you haven't already, uh, <clears throat> go ahead and subs- go ahead and subscribe on whatever platform you're on. Give us a rating on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, and share it on your social medias. But yeah. Five stars only. <laughs> <laughs> you got nothing nice to say. Don't say anything at all. <laughs> but yeah, without further ado, uh, Sean, what do you got for me? All right. So, question number one, Thomas. Introduction of yourself. That question? Yeah, like give your, <laughs> give yourself a small introduction before I start actually drill, drilling you in this interview. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. <laughs> um, make sure it's actually recording. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, we got small introduction about myself. Uh, let's see here. Uh. Thomas Carney. I was, uh, I think, currently live currently live around right, right here in uh, Plum, Pennsylvania, Plum Borough in, Pitts, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and a little bit of going a little bit further back. Um, I grew up in a small a small town uh, called Ligonier, and about an hour away from where I'm at now. And didn't really grow. I didn't really grow up. Whenever where the actually area where I where my family lived. We didn't have people around us. At least, not people we knew. Everybody that we interacted with was a, like was like fifteen, at least uh, like fifteen twenty minutes away from us. Um, so, and that definitely contributes to. I feel like that definitely contributes to some of my, some of my mentalities now, some of my introvertedness now, um, because uh, I would spend a lot of time by myself. Uh, specifically, also because I have four sisters. And I remember a time my dad told me, I think I was either, I think I was in college by the time my dad told me this, but my dad got so worried, my mom got so worried that I was by myself all the time, always in my room by myself, that she wanted my dad to take me to to see like some specialist. And my dad just laughed at her. (laughs) And uh, he was like, Chrissy, he has four sisters. Like, yeah, he's going to be in his room all the time. <laughs> he's not going to leave. Um, but, yeah, I think... Uh, but, no, I think, like, and now going into a little bit who I am now, I, uh, I'm currently a web and mobile app developer for a broadcasting company. I've uh, been, been there for about five and a half years, and a little over five and a half, and... I am a person of faith. I go to, uh, currently go to, uh, Sean and I, I think you already know this, go to Amplify Church. And that's, pro- that my, and my faith is definitely the core of my life. It wasn't always, but as I got to, uh, as I got to grow closer with God and, uh, he revealed more of himself to me, I, uh, I really got, I really got to know what it meant, what it means to, not just be a Christian, not just be a Christ follower, but like to really strive um, towards an actual calling on your life, towards a goal. And it's not something a lot of people 
I don't, it's not something I really think a lot of people understand. And I've still got a lot of work to do on it. But, yeah, that's something maybe dive into at some point in a future episode about um, setting goals and achieving and how to achieve them. But, um, yeah, I think I think that's a uh, I think that's an intro. amazing, amazing intro. All right, so let's start it off with some easy questions. Question number one. Favorite food? I'm going to dive into some very easy questions in the beginning before we go hard. <laughs> Favorite food? Pineapple. Straight up. <laughs> Love pineapple. As long as they don't go on pizza, I'm cool Especially with on pizza. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, pizza, pineapple pizza, don't at me. Actually, no, you can, so you share the podcast, but... <laughs> very, very hot take. Very hot take. It's not that hot. Uh, pineapples don't belong pizza. Uh, <laughs> this is my interview, you don't get an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> that might be fair. I'll, I'll, I'll have my, my, my opinion on my interview. All right, so um, question number two. Who is your favorite sibling? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Favorite sibling? I don't really, don't really have one. I think I like all. I like I. My, all, you know, I like all my sisters. Love all my sisters. Uh, but no, I. Uh, I remember growing up. I had like Nicole was like my buddy, until and then she be- became more uh, more of a woman as she grew up, and <laughs> and like we didn't do as much stuff together. But when we were young, when we were younger, uh, she got she had that uh, kind of tomboy vibe. So it was uh, so that was fun. But uh, but yeah, I don't really have one. What a perfect answer! <laughs> Shout out to Nicole. You were his favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I think he also, loves them all equally. I think also at the time it was just two. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What is your biggest fear? Hmm. Biggest fear. You just you they just are easy and I just <laughs> okay biggest fear I'd say like I think the biggest fear would be looking back on a looking back on life and not making not making um not making decisions to take a take take certain leaps. Or um, talk to certain pe- yeah, talk to certain people. Not to, like, to, like if I look back at my life and realize like right now, if I look back at my life, I'd be perfectly content. But if there is something like and there and there are things I want to do, and I, I right now I feel like I still have time, but you never really know how much time you have left. Um, so I th- feel like if I was like maybe another ten, like, another even like five years down the road. And I look, and I was like, okay, I'm about to die. Hope, hopefully, I don't die in five years. But like, um, God only knows. So like, you look back and you're like, oh man, I'm still at the same spot I was five years ago. That's my biggest fear. If that's not to grow. Mm, that's good. I feel like that's a really good, really good answer. I can't tie in on this. We'll go to the next question. Um, if you had to travel anywhere in the world, where would it be? I should have, you should have given me these questions first because I, <laughs> I have the, anywhere in the world anywhere in the world Japan actually yeah Japan top tier they got they got they got the they got the pizza vending machine so I'm gonna try it <laughs> literally top tier <laughs> top tier answer what motivates you to work hard growth same thing uh, motivates me to work hard is when the, first it's it, it's, it's growth, that's the immediate answer, but then the more defined answer behind that is not just growth, but what comes with growth. It's like looking, you want, I wanted to make sure, and it, there's there's some things, unhealthy sides of it that I had to kind of learn through, but like, if I say I'm going to do something, like, I have full intentions at that time to do it, and there are times when like you can overpromise. Uh, which I, I do I, which I've made the mistake of in the past, but like I what what motivates me to work hard is the promise of growth. And like that's something I think even with uh, certain things I'm doing now that and I'll say I don't know who's all going to listen to this podcast, but I'll and if they fire me, they fire me. My current job <laughs> like it's uh 
the only gr- there's not much there very there's very little room for growth in the areas that where that I could grow uh, could grow in. I don't like feel a call towards growing in that area uh, in a certain towards in a certain position, which would come with more money and would grow grow the pay, grow the wallet, but it wouldn't really like grow me in a way that I'm intentionally looking to grow. Um, so like. I, th- I guess I guess the more de- the more defined answer would be growth. Growth and motivates me to uh, to work hard is the the prospect of gro- the prospect of growth in either per- in like personal development, mindfulness, leadership, something that will make me a better person. Yeah, I think that's a great answer. I loved how you phrased that. All right, we're gonna move to the next question. What would change? What would you change about yourself if you could? What would I change about myself? Yeah, I don't like that question. <laughs> hey, it's a it's a fair okay, question. Be I don't really think I I think it's I to be honest I don't I think right now who I am now I don't feel like I would I feel like there's like. I continuously want to grow, but like, I, I I'm not gonna say it, I wish I was. I, I, anyone can say I wish I was rich or I wish I had this or that, but I don't really feel like that matters too much. No, I don't. I don't think it's asking about that. I, for me, I think it's asking more of like, if there's a certain flaw you don't like about yourself, what would you change? You like if you could get rid of that flaw. Like for me, I think one of my flaws is procrastination. Like me personally, mm-hmm. so I would. Like, if I could change that, I would take that out of the equation. Other things is doing something stupid, spontaneousness. Sometimes that's one of my hugest flaws. That's what I think it's meaning. I don't think it okay. means, like, out of your personal, like, you know, you. Yeah. It's more of... At least that's what the question says. <laughs> <laughs> um, sure, we'll go off that then. Um, I think, like... One area I'm work one area I'm working in right now. Then, if if if, if it was possible, it's not. But if it's possible, just to flip a switch and be like, okay, I can be a little bit more, uh, uh, not not be an extrovert, but be more extroverted um, than I am currently. Like even, that's like a little bit. I'm not looking at. I'm not looking to drastically change in that area, yeah. but like just to be able, just to be able to talk with just to be a, uh, more comfortable talking with people. Because like I'm growing, but that but we're working on that, so that'll happen anyway. I think you're doing great at that, honestly. You're you're expanding and you're expanding is something that you're building up to be better and better at. Yeah. And that that'll happen over time that you'll be uh, you'll be successful at that. Uh, we'll move on to the next question. Uh, let's see, what really makes you angry? Makes me angry. Okay. Um. No, that one. <laughs> uh, uh, what really makes me angry? Um, I'd say like the first thing that popped in my head, and this is more of a something I've realized more recently, and I don't know necessarily where it comes from, and it's not like an anger of like um, being angry at somebody. It's like this internal thing I feel about how other people feel about themselves. Um, an internal feeling, I guess I should have said. But, like, um, when I hear people say, like, they feel like a burden. Or they feel like, oh, this thing is happening in my life. I, and, and everything I have to do now, I feel like a burden a burden on everybody around me. For some, for some reason, I don't... And I don't <clears throat> specifically know why. But, like... When I hear people say that, I get mad. Not at them, but at that at the specific not not even at the specific mentality, but like I get so like not it's really hard to explain because like it's not I'm not mad at them because it's like because like it's an understandable mindset and it's valid, um, but like you look but you look at a person who is perfectly fine, a perfect a perfectly good person, but then they feel like they're a burden on other people. That is, to, to me, that's like a, um, to me, that that is like, 
insecurity? No, it's like a reflection of the people. Almost, not even a reflection of the people around them. It, it's like I, I, I can't explain like, like, they're like they're, around almost like the idea of what caused that to be, of like what caused that person to feel like a burden, and like and be like, no, like I don't see you that way. Like I don't see you as a burden. They don't see you as a burden, and like, like. It's like I uh, and like it's like if somebody's listening and that that's something you hear like he, you feel you you feel sometimes you feel like a burden on somebody else uh, because of something that even especially on something that's outside of your control like I'm gonna tell you flat out you're not and then that's all the enemy trying to d- dig into your dig into your mind and push you down I think that's what makes me mad when the enemy uh, is like knocking people out and it's obvious right uh that like that's that's what makes me mad like it's like somebody not living up to their to their potential because living up to their potential or even like having being able to be a healthy mind even though it's not an easy thing to do like it i and then we go on off and i'm going to change this a little bit but like it also kind of leads into seeing somebody struggle in an area that that I uh, that I know they can get themselves out of and then explain that to them and then they and, I, and, and or like and other people do it and like I talk to them and like whether it's mind body uh, mind body spirit whatever it is like you tell them like this, like you can try this or that you maybe therapy will work for you you can do this and they and like they shut it down like no nah, that won't work for me, like I I like I'm too broken, and that makes me mad too because that that's just quitting. Right, I agree. I think, uh, and I think there's also there's valid validity validity in that as well. There's like other things and other uh, things to overcome, but like in the moment, that's like it's not talking down on people. It's just like there's all there's 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 there's, there's things like that. There's a solution. There's things like. Where if you get stuck in an area, mentally, there are like if you if you like if they're struggling in an area mentally, I speak from this through experience. Like if you're struggling in an area like mentally, and you can't and you and you feel like you're spiraling every single day, you're always burnt out or whatever. Like you go to a therapist because you therapist counselor whatever you want to call it because God's put a calling on these people's lives. To be able to understand the human psyche, they like to be able to want to understand it, go to school and understand it, so that they can help other people out. Like there's a specific calling for people to be able to help other people's minds, and and how to help them, how to help you understand yourself better. And people, and that's the mistake so many people make that they think they understand themselves when they don't. And like, yeah. I think so I got a little heated there. <laughs> no, no, I think it was good. Good. I yeah. mean, uh, we want real emotion. You know, we're not scripting this, people. Yeah. So this is really good. Um, now, what is your favorite book of the Bible? I feel like we've talked about this before, and it's, I've always said I, I I haven't read that many books in the, in the Bible. To be honest, I've only I've read you know, fully straight through, and I'm just <clears throat> I'll say the one I've read the most recently. That straight through with Romans, and so right now that that is a phenomenal book. Um, getting slowly into Exodus right now, but um, I'd say like I'd say Romans. I've only I've only read a few a few books straight through. Uh, but yeah, I definitely say Romans as of right now because right currently it's like which, whichever one I'm read whichever one I'm currently reading ends up being my favorite. So <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. I think that's a good answer. Who is your favorite biblical hero? Favorite biblical hero? Mm-hmm. Like, see, this kind of goes in the same line. Like, besides, like the obvious one, there's Jesus. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's the uh, <laughs> that's the obvious one for like all of us. Well, so like we we'll go with the second one then. <laughs> um, I think David. I feel like da- like he he messed up, uh, he, but then he owns up. He he messed like he did he did he did a lot of good. You know, with David and Goliath, 
but then he and but the, and like he grows becomes a king messes up and then is actually told uh but then and then it's like i think we read this today like he messes up and fall, listens to what satan tells him to do and then owns up to it and then and then past that i honestly don't know too much but like there's just a, like a lot, a lot I hear. The more I learn about him, the more I'm like, yeah, that's I don't know, it's real. I don't know. Honestly, I think that was a really good answer. Um, let me see another good question. Who is your hero in today's society? It could be your dad. It could be your mom. It could be your friend. It could be a pastor. It could be whoever is leading you in the right way. So, I'm saying it could be any any choice of society today. Okay. I've never, I never put the word hero to this. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll take that as me a mentor. Uh, because I've never really... I don't really can, like, see anybody and be like, they're my hero. Uh, not to, like, downplay with people who do have have, have current heroes. Uh, I just never I just never put that word uh, into my vocabulary for that kind of stuff. But, like, um, I think, like... There's a few people in my life right now that, one, I need, know I need to talk to more just because of who they are and the things that they've accomplished, but also because, like, they have mentored me in the past and everything that they've done is, uh, phenom- it, 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 everything that they've done, it ha- like, that I've seen is phenomenal. Uh, so I'd say, uh, Pastor Ed, Pastor Ed Newell, and, uh, Pat, Patrick Williams. Like, those are the top two that pop in my mind straight away, and they're the two that I want to uh, get to know, and they're the two people I try to get to know more and need to reach out to more and talk to more. Um, Ed, I do talk to uh, every now and then. Pat, um, not as often as I should. But, like, the stuff that, like, and, like that's, and that's two different areas of my life, that, but that kind of also coincide with, in a, in, at the core of faith. Um, because, uh, Pat was um, Project One Nutrition and how successful that's being. And just like listening, hearing the stories whenever we, him and I meet up every now and then, like, and hearing like all the things that they're doing and the acquisitions that they're making and like the biggest deals that he's ever made. And like, he, and he talks about the mindset behind it. And I think that to me, that is really cool. And like, that's really like, and that a lot of that only comes with experience. So like a lot of a lot of like how he's able to accomplish these things, and like and then there's Ed, like who's in the area of my, area of life of like him and I are very similar similar uh, people in the mindset of um, of technology both both big nerds um, and but him and I can all big nerds but and like he's further like, yeah you know, have a family and kids and I. Um, just really respect him as like being able. To, he'll tell you straight up how it is. He won't. He won't sugarcoat. And like if you're going through something, you, you I go. If I'm going through something, I go to Ed because he will not sugarcoat and he will. Uh, he won't sugarcoat, and he'll give me a biblical reason. Uh, so, uh, sometimes biblical, sometimes just like just ba- some very good, not basic, but some very good advice that will help me. That will help me out when I'm in a bind. Uh, so yeah, I think. Th- yeah, I'd say that uh, they're the two that are like, older, and then I think that one more, uh, I'd say, just because he's my one of my best friends, and we've had a lot of great conversations, and we might have him on the podcast at some point soon, I'd say Andrew Vergato, just because the wisdom that is in him that I've never seen in somebody who is, what is he, tw- 21? Yeah. Like... When I met him, he's eighteen, and like he's grown so much since then. But he was already so much more wiser than I will ever was. Uh, whenever, uh, whenever I uh, first met him, so like, so yeah, I'd say those three. I think that was really good. Uh, I got time for enough for two more questions. All right, so question number one: worst leadership advice you've got. Worst leadership. I can tell you the worst advice I've gotten. But the worst leader. Worst leadership advice. That is a good question, though. Yeah. That is a good question, though. Um, 
Worst leadership advice. Beyond, man, I don't, I don't, I have to go back. I mean, every, all the advice I've gotten recently, like, like at least in per, in person, I think, I, I think all the advice I've gotten recently either comes from books or from people that I uh, just talked, other people I just talked about. Um, so like, and I can't think back as far as whenever the advice was ba probably bad. <laughs> like I used to be, uh, when I, uh, six summers, I was a man, uh, three summers, I was a manager at Ottawa Park in the food stands and technically a leader, but didn't really understand leadership. So like, I don't really know the answer to that question. I think my worst mindset, my personal worst mindset around leadership was that all that meant is that you got to tell people what to do. And that was my just my core understanding of like, yeah, I like being in charge because I can tell people to do stuff and they listen and they have to listen to me. And that's not even true. They can they can just leave. <laughs> 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 so I uh, so like uh so yeah, I don't really have an answer for that question directly. All right. Well, what is the best leadership advice you've gotten? That's really hard. Okay, there's a lot of good advice. Uh, <laughs> okay, that's going to be straight. I, I, I didn't know that's where you were going, but, like, it's really hard. <laughs> like, uh, I would have, and that one I would have had to prepare for, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, there's no prep time here. <laughs> <laughs> well, there can be, there probably will be one day. <laughs> That one, uh, let me see if I can, let me, uh, uh, one, at least a, something good. Uh, you know what, the first thing that pops in my mind, I think, uh, here's a few, okay, there, I'm, I'm just thinking about, like, John Maxwell, and the things I've learned from him. Um, if you haven't heard of John Maxwell, definitely look up his, look him up, watch, uh, he has a uh, John Maxwell Leadership uh, Podcast, they have an executive podcast too, that's really good to listen to, um, he has over 100 books on leadership, um, but like, I, the one thing, the uh, two things that popped in my head, though, were the concepts of more and before, and that a leader sees, a leader, it's a leader's role to see more and before the people that they're leading. So that means like you see you see the vision, you see you see more, you see you don't just see what's happening now, you see what's going you see what's potentially going to happen and you see potential problems. You see like um, problems like interpersonally, you see uh, problems anything that can like stop the vision. Mm. And you see, you see more, and you see it before anybody else does. And then you don't necessarily need to be the person to execute to solve the problem, but you need to know who those people are that can execute to solve the problem. Oh, that's good. Um, and and then there's and then there's um, I forget the exact term, but it was called walk. It essentially, says walking through the crowd. Walking swift, not walking swiftly, walking slowly. That's what, there it is. Walking slowly through the crowd, and what that means, like, and the what I remember him talking about, like, as he, like he is like he walk he physically when he's down like at a conference or something, he doesn't stand on stage the whole time and wait for people to come to him. He goes to the people, and or like whenever he uh, he goes and like shakes people's hands, says hi, I'm John. What uh, how uh, and like just uh, introduces himself to people. And, like, just slowly, like, shows people that, like, he's not above them, he's with them. And also, is also, like, walking with, like, um, uh, you go amongst your team, and you, and you, and you uh, walk amongst your team, or even, like, amongst your uh, church congregation, and no matter what, you if you hold a position or not, you're slowly walking through the crowd, and, like, just showing people that you're, like, you're here for them. You're not here. You like you're you're here for them. You're here to like it, it, in a specific leadership position. Like you're here not to lead them but to serve them. And the best way to exemplify that, and there's probably more to the concept. That I'm not uh I'm not fully diving into it, but like the uh like you're showing people like yeah that I'm here to serve. I'm here to serve. I'm not above you. I'm with you. That's good stuff. 
Yeah. Um, what was the other... Uh, you said one more thing. Uh, when I said I could give you... Ask for the worst advice, yeah. the leadership advice. Can I give you the worst... Like, this is the worst advice I've gotten, like, just on a different topic? Yeah, yeah, sure. Because it, it popped in my head and I want to uh, bring it up. The... So, the, I had a... Um, Tony Robbins uh, uh, results coach and uh, for six months. And overall, it was a really great experience. There is just one thing. I, I told you about this already. There is one thing with it that I, like, I, I, feel, I, I know goes against, the, like, my core values of being a Christian um, that he wanted me to do uh, for my business. And... It wasn't necessarily to lie, but it was to twist the truth. Yeah, so lie. And well, <laughs> it's like a conniving one. It's like you're technically not lying <laughs> by saying yeah. by lying. See, this this it's you're telling you're telling like it's like it's saying like hey you like, hey you press the like button you share you share this post you could win a million dollars. But there could be no million dollars lined up. But like you say, you could. There's a potential that you, you don't like. You'll be no potential if you don't. So like, um, so like, it, that's not what he was saying. But like, it was like telling me that I could line up, uh, telling people that they could, uh, I could put them on a track to make ten thousand dollars a month by using the skills that I, I can teach them, because obviously there's people that do that that. that uh, use those skills that are at the top of whatever skills would they be using. That's kind of like the uh, mindset you try to give me. And I was, that made me very uncomfortable. I'm like, I think it kind of falls into like just being honest. Yeah. Because like it's, and like it's, the way I see it, it's tech, like, it could be technically not lying or you could be, uh, Complete, or it could could it be a complete lie, but but not well. It could be only partially a lie because some people use the skills, but some people don't. And like because it's not just it's not the only way. And like I think that uh, thing that advice that I would flip on it would just like you're just being like whenever you're wanting to guide somebody, you wanting to lead somebody, you don't lead them on with clickbait. You lead you, you don't lead them on. You 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 like um yeah. It goes back to it like. You, you don't show like you can show them what you can you can show them by you can't you don't really tell them what you can do for them but you show them right and like you don't show people if you want to lead somebody and you want people to follow you like you have to show them that you're worth following agreed and like you can't just, and you can't just be like hey I can do this for you like, you don't know you don't know me from Adam but I can I, I, like this this like, but I could, uh, but these are the words I'm saying. Like, it sounds good. So, like, you should follow me. Like, I think that's like <clears throat> a lot of the, a lot of people fall into that trap with the, uh, online influencers, um, like all the in, in, Insta influencers out there. Like, people fall into that trap a lot just because people say some fancy words uh, or know how to say things in a certain way to um, get people to be intrigued or like almost like guilt trip people into buying their product or doing certain things. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of sneaky stuff out there uh, you have to watch out for. Um, that's also part of my background. It's like, uh, it's like, uh, it's, it's like having a, uh, wanting to have my own coaching, life coaching business. Um, and so I've done a lot of research in the last few years about what business, about business. But, um, but no, that's I don't know. That's pretty much all. That's all I got on that. That was just something I wanted to bring up because it was it was it, it was definitely on my heart to bring up. But um, I think it's good. I it, mean, it, people should not know about the fine print and shouldn't do crooked stuff like that. Being honest is definitely the best way of being a leader. Yeah, I, I think. Uh, yeah, you got anything else for me? Oh, all right. Let's no, see. You don't, you don't have to. This could, this could be the end. We, we were already over time. <laughs> Well, um, I didn't, but I do want to end on a positive note. So well, let's. I didn't uh, say that wasn't positive. No, no, I meant like a like our goofy thing at the end where we uh do <laughs> or something like that. I didn't mean it like it wasn't oh. positive. 
We didn't prepare. <laughs> we should have had something prepared. But, um, no. Nah, we want to... Uh, eventually, every now and then, uh, we'll figure it out. But, like, uh, I think... Uh, so there's not a lot of white space. We probably should just end it here. <laughs> I guess we'll end it here, guys. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Actually, no. We'll see it later this week for part two of this, of, of this series where I'm going to be doing the same thing to Sean and asking, him some, asking him some questions. Part so, two. It's going to be good. So, yeah, stay, stay tuned, and uh, eventually we'll get some outro music. Let's go.